Welcome to the Majestic Truth Podcast. Join us as we delve into the mysteries of the universe, explore the unexplained, and shed light on some of the most important events that have occurred and are occurring in our world today. Get ready to open your mind, expand your horizons, and discover the extraordinary. This is the Majestic Truth Podcast. And now your host, Michelle. Welcome aboard, Truth Seekers. Fasten your seatbelts and prepare for an unforgettable ride. Together we'll question, explore, and embrace the majesty of truth. I'm so grateful you are here today. So today is our monthly Motivation Mastery episode. Uh, We're going to try to do one of these a month. Um, But before I dive into this, um, I wanted to cover a quick news story that appeared on the Hill.com's website called UFOs are the story of the century. Wake up, America, by Rear Admiral Tim Gallaudet. Tim, forgive me if I said your name, your last name wrong. Um, he was at the House Oversight Committee hearing on UAPs. Side note, if you haven't yet listened to the pre-launch episode on the hearing we put out the day after the hearing, give it a listen. We pulled out the highlight sound bites from it. And got the interview from over two and a half hours down to 51 minutes. So give it a listen. You can find it on the podcast apps or go to MajesticTruth.com forward slash podcast. There's also a downloadable for it with um, some of the clips that we pulled out that we thought were fantastic. So give that a download. So the article at the Hill.com gives a synopsis of the hearing and goes on to state the following. Perhaps the era of fake news has desensitized the public to remarkable revelations like these. So I feel compelled to share my perspective to shed light on their validity and implications. Okay, so now the author of this article is a retired U.S. Navy flag officer. And he goes on to say the following. As a retired U.S. Navy flag officer, I can attest to the integrity and authenticity of the two pilots who testified. Retired Commander David Fravor and Ryan Graves. I have served on three aircraft carriers and count many naval aviators as close friends. These two witnesses are the real deal. So is David Grush. As a Navy Information Warfare Officer, I worked closely with the intelligence community and Grush's former command, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I too have been read into special access programs and I understand how Department of Defense classification systems and authorities work. His testimony is 100% credible. Well said here. He then lists out three ways to respond to the aftermath of this hearing. Number one, the U.S. Congress should continue to demand the Department of Defense and Intelligence community disclose UAP information, data, and materials to the public. Number two, The U.S. government should show leadership in international scientific studies of UAP. The U.S. has the opportunity to lead in a field with potentially more impact than ever before. Either we lead or we get left behind. Number three, the U.S. research community should significantly expand the scientific study of UAP. He closes his article by stating the following. Our tiny planet orbits a relatively medium-sized star in a galaxy of over 100 billion stars among a distribution of several hundred billion galaxies in the observable universe. How arrogant to believe we are the only species that has developed a means for travel between celestial bodies. Now that we are finding out otherwise, we must demand disclosure of what the government knows. Instead of staying asleep at the wheel, we should wake up as a society for the safety, security, and scientific advantages that can be gained. Standing O here, Rear Admiral Gallaudet. Please read this article in its entirety at thehill.com. We will have a direct link to it on the episode page to check it out when you can. It's well worth the time. These were only just little snippets that I pulled out, but it's a fascinating and fantastic article with amazing points and you're going to want to give it a look. 
Okay, so today is our monthly Motivation Mastery episode. If you want to check out the show notes for this episode, head on over to MajesticTruth.com forward slash episode five. That's MajesticTruth.com forward slash episode five. That's the number five. And also, go here to grab the downloadable for this particular episode. Today's monthly motivation mastery topic is finding your inner drive, unleashing motivation in everyday life. We are going to explore the concept of intrinsic motivation and how to tap into it for sustained motivation in various aspects of life. We have 10 tips to help you on your journey of inner truth and finding that inner drive to keep you motivated even with what craziness comes with our everyday lives. There are so many things coming at us every day and life is even busier than ever before, especially with all of this access to our time via tech, our phones, social media, smartwatches, email. We are all juggling all of this along with raising families and working full-time jobs. And some of us are doing all of this along with trying to start or maintain some type of side hustle or maybe even an intense hobby, physical fitness, making sure you get enough rest. Oh, and needing to continually educate, to stay up to date, to maintain our relevance in whatever careers we find ourselves in. Whoa. That is so much that I just mentioned. Yikes, but a lot of us, not most of us, are doing this continual juggling in our everyday lives, and it's so easy to just get exhausted. I mean, I'm kind of exhausted just saying all of it. So here's 10 tips to help keep you motivated on your journey and path to achieve those goals and dreams and find your inner truth. Okay, finding your inner drive tip number one. Reflect on your values and passions. Take the time to identify what truly matters to you and what brings you joy. Understand your core values and align your goals and actions with them. When you are passionate about something, it becomes a natural source of motivation. For example, when I was deciding what to do next with my life, my next real solid goal, I said, there's so much I want to accomplish and do. What I have done a lot in my life is have multiple goals going at once. And doing that, I was seeing not one was getting the best of me. It was getting partial versions of me. And well, let's just, <laughs> that's just not going to give that one thing my best to lead me to success. So here's what I did. I wrote them down. I had seven, seven goals, things I wanted to accomplish that I thought were great entrepreneurial ideas. And I zoomed an amazing friend, Liz, and said, hey, can you help me narrow this down? So I went through the first two on my list. And while I was into what I was saying, I would accomplish, I wasn't super lit up about it, right? And then I got to number three on my list. And it was this podcast and MajesticTruth.com, which is that one passion project I have been picking up and putting back down for over five years now. And when I described this to my great friend, she had a huge smile on her face and she was asking me all kinds of questions. And I was so hyped when I was talking about it, what I want to do with it and where I could see it go in different phases and even one day be a full VR experience. I mean, I was so stoked talking about it. So then she said, okay, Tell me about the others. So I did. And I said, so what'd you think? And she was like, are you kidding me, Michelle? Number three, without a doubt. I mean, sometimes you just need that one friend to tell you your idea and to have them validate your passion is priceless. So to recap, tip number one, reflect on your values and passions. When you are passionate about something, it becomes a natural source of motivation. If you aren't sure what to pursue and give your all, find that friend or family member to tell your ideas to. I mean, really list them out 
and don't hang up that phone or Zoom call until you have chosen that one idea that you're going to stick with and see it through. All right, next tip, finding your inner drive tip number two. Okay, so now that you've completed tip number one and decided which dream slash project you are going to pursue and see through, set meaningful goals. Establish clear, specific, and achievable goals that align with your values and aspirations. Break them down into smaller, manageable steps to create a sense of progress and accomplishment. Setting meaningful goals provides direction and purpose, igniting motivation along the way. Take some time. Put your music on. Make sure you can really focus and flip that phone over and silence it. Now break that project you want to accomplish down and then break it down again. I mean, once you see the smaller steps, it makes you see it's so doable and not so overwhelming. I'm a huge fan of utilizing checklists, the handwritten ones. I have a day planner and here's what I do. I draw a line right down the middle of the day. One half is my full-time work. The other half is the projects that I, that I have chosen. And every day I have both columns with items in it. Listen, even if you do one item from this checklist you have made, no matter how small, it starts building momentum and eventually you are well on your way to completing your goal. So you have a master checklist for this project and when you're filling out what needs to be done for the day, and some people do this day bef the day before, you pull an item from that master list you made and you put it on the right column of your daily planner. So set those goals and ignite that motivation. So just to sum that up real quick, sit down, you write down all of the steps, the small steps, I mean, break it down. So you've got a master list. Then you've got your day planner. Some of you may use a digital day planner. That's fine too, okay? So if you've got a day job and this is your side hustle you're building, this is what you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna wanna be able to divide your day into two halves. The first half is your day job. I mean, that's the bread and butter, okay? That gets attention, right? The second half, you're going to look at that master list and you're going to look at what you've got going on for your day job for the day and you're going to say, okay, this is what I've got. I know I'm going to have left in me at the end of the day, so I'm just going to pick something small and I'm going to put it in the right column, right? And then you know at five or six, whenever your day job ends, you're going to come home or if you work from home, you're going to switch gears and you're going to handle those tasks for the part two of your day for this project and goal that you've chosen. Very important. So you're going to want to do this either at the end of the day or tomorrow, or you're going to want to do it right before you even start your day. So set those goals, ignite that motivation. All right, next tip, defining your inner drive. Tip number three. Okay, so now that you've decided what you're passionate about, and broken this down into manageable goals and have a master checklist, that brings us to tip number three. Cultivate a positive mindset. Your mindset plays a crucial role in your motivation. Foster a positive outlook by practicing gratitude, focusing on solutions rather than problems, and reframing challenges as opportunities for growth. Believe in your abilities and maintain a can-do attitude. We all can do that negative self-talk, right? But stop. You're amazing. You can do this. And if there's something you don't know how to do, know you can learn how to do it. Focusing on problems brings more problems and will bring a project to its knees and potentially make you leave it on the table and give up. Don't. There's a solution. Find it. That's why you picked a project you have passion for. Because where there is a will, there is a way, right? You can do this. Sometimes those challenges that present themselves are real opportunities to learn. And if you didn't have that challenge presented to you, you wouldn't have learned that thing you needed to know to be successful. So reframe that challenge, focus on solutions, be grateful for that wonderful mind you have, and get it done. Just keep moving forward one step at a time. All right, finding your inner drive, tip number four. Okay, so you've decided what you're passionate about, broken down this 
into a master checklist. You have your positive mindset. Now, tip number four, find your why. Connect with the deeper reasons behind your goals and aspirations. Understanding the purpose and significance of what you're working towards can provide a strong internal motivation. Reflect on how achieving your goals will positively impact your life and the lives of others around you. I'm sure you've heard this before, and that's because it's a key to meeting and exceeding your goals. Find your why. Your why will get you out of bed. Your why will keep you tackling that master list no matter how long that list is. Next tip to finding your inner drive, tip number five. Okay, we're building on this inner drive here and getting all the gears in place to achieve our goals and dreams. We have decided what we're passionate about. We have broken this down into a master checklist. We have our positive mindset. We have our why defined. That brings us to tip number five. Break down those barriers. Identify and address any barriers or obstacles that might be hindering your motivation. This could include limiting beliefs. This is a huge one. Fear of failure, another big one perfectionism, or external distractions. Our lives are filled with distractions. So you have to develop strategies to overcome these obstacles, such as seeking support, learning new skills, or adjusting your environment. Let's quickly knock these down one by one. Limiting beliefs. We all have them. We aren't good enough. We aren't smart enough. Someone else is more qualified. I'm crazy. I never see things through. I'll just drop this ball like I always do. And on and on and on. Stop. I'm here to tell you, just you being alive is a miracle. You are a miracle. You can do this. You are smart enough. Whatever you don't know to accomplish your goal, you can learn. We live in the information age where what we need to learn is at our fingertips, whether through an online course, a friend, a YouTube video, Your community, there are so many tools at our disposal that we can utilize. Okay, how about the fear of failure and perfectionism? (laughs) I feel like they can be coupled together. We have the fear of failure because some of us are afraid it won't be perfect. So this keeps us from even starting at all. Why do it if we can't do it right? Who is it that defines what's perfect? Why can't you do it and keep working on it? We are all a work in progress. So why can't our projects be a work in progress? The idea is just get started and every day do at least one thing towards this goal. You can do this. So before uh, I recorded this episode, I got a text from my mom with a picture, right? And I just want to read this quote to you because it, she has no idea how much it aligned perfectly with this episode. So here's the quote. It looks like it's like a billboard on the side of a business building, um, maybe in Manhattan. Your, and here's the, here's the quote. Your first workout will be bad. Your first podcast will be bad. Your first speech will be bad. Your first video will be bad. Your first anything will be bad. But you can't make your 100th without making your first. So put your ego aside and start. So this was a quote by Edgar Allan Doe. That's at Alec underscore Zamora. So um, great quote. And um, it's so perfectly timed with this episode. So my mom said, you go, girl, with that podcast. Proud of you putting yourself out there to try new things. And it's um, some of us are scared that we won't be the utmost perfect at it. And it's you don't have to be. Just get started. It, it's just a, it's a beautiful quote. And thanks, mom. It was so perfectly timed for recording t- uh, today's episode. All right. Now let's go to external distractions. We all fall victim, I'm sure, to those external distractions. Our gadgets, our family even, our email, social media is a big one. This can take you down an abyss. And it's a major time suck where you're like, uh, where did the past 45 minutes just go? So how can we tackle this? Schedule this time every day. Maybe it's first thing in the morning before you start the day job. You get up a little early every day and take 30 minutes to work towards this goal. How bad do you want it? 
How bad do you want to achieve this goal? So get out of bed, move, move toward that goal one step at a time. 30 more minutes of sleep will be great, but it will not bring you closer to accomplishing that goal. And if the mornings don't work okay, then how about on your lunch? You take 30 minutes and commit to that master list and accomplish something, no matter how small. Just keep moving. This is about getting momentum and unleashing that motivation to complete this goal or project. Schedule that time and honor that commitment. This is important. So these are some barriers that you have to break down and you can and you will because you want this achievement that bad. So you will do what it takes, right? All right. Next up for finding your inner drive is tip number six. Okay. We're building on this inner drive here, getting all the gears in place to unleash our motivation. We have decided what we're passionate about. We have broken this down into a master checklist. We have our positive mindset. We have our why. We are breaking down those barriers and limiting beliefs, fear of failure and all those barriers that are in our way. Bringing us to tip number six, creating a motivating environment. Surround yourself with positive influences, supportive people, and inspiring resources. Design your physical space and digital environment to minimize distractions and foster productivity. Fill your surroundings with motivational quotes, images, or objects that resonate with you. I have quotes taped to my bathroom mirror, and I repeat them in the morning as I'm getting ready. It's all about manifesting our goals being achieved and accomplishing extraordinary things. I have motivation quotes taped to my computer. I play motivating music. I have playlists in Spotify that are just to motivate me. I love lighting, so I have these cool lights all around my office space that just make me smile. I have two motivating neon signs that light up and say, do what you love. And the other one says, you got this. Just reminders that I just need to keep going because I am possible. My goals are possible and I will achieve them. Keep motivating yourself and print pictures of things that remind you of your goals so you're seeing this throughout your day. It will just give you that push you need sometimes to just keep going and get it done. All right, next tip for finding your inner drive is tip number seven. So we're building on this inner drive here. We have decided our passion, broken it down into a master checklist, a positive mindset in place, our why is defined, We're breaking down those barriers. We have our motivating environment. Now a super important tip. Tip number seven, practicing self-care. Taking care of your physical, mental, and emotional well-being is essential for maintaining motivation. Prioritize self-care activities that recharge and rejuvenate you, such as exercise, healthy eating, sufficient sleep, and engaging in hobbies or activities you enjoy. I have struggled with this because I push myself so hard and I work a lot. And this one slips. And when this slips, everything slips. I have found when I end my day, if I stop and do some self-care, like for me, it's going down into my basement and putting that Oculus Quest on my face and doing some supernatural workouts. It's a fitness VR app for the Oculus. It rejuvenates my mind and it helps me to take a moment to think while I'm slashing the heck out of those circles that come flying at me, I come out of there refreshed and I sleep better too. And I have such a good time doing it. On the, and the music is fantastic. On the other side of it, I am so much better off. It's in, super important to take care of yourself and it's so easy to lose sight of this. So eating better, exercising, and taking care of your mind too is important. I fall asleep every night to brainwave therapy and it helps me calm my mind because if you're anything like me, It's so hard to stop the noggin and the wheels from spinning. But this brainwave therapy by an artist and her name is Kelly Howell. Um, Kelly, H-O-W-E-L-L. I have been listening to her for years. And I'm not kidding. It's every single night. She has so many albums. She's on Apple Music. Um, There's a lot that she has. It's just um, manifesting. And um, some of them are just brainwave therapy. It's just subliminal messaging. Ah, it puts me right to sleep, calms my mind. I just focus either on her voice or there's some that she's not speaking at all. It's just wonderful sounds and 
the sounds of the ocean sometimes and i can't recommend her enough like i said i've been listening to her for years uh so many years so um check her out she's fantastic now finding your inner drive tip number eight build accountability and structure find ways to hold yourself accountable for your goals and progress this could involve creating a schedule using productivity tools or partnering with an accountability buddy or mentor who can provide guidance and support i personally utilize the accountability partner strategy my friend and i check in with each other on a weekly basis some do this more frequently but i do it once a week and talk about what i accomplished for the week and what i have planned for the weekend to accomplish you both share and help each other and you champion each other too when these barriers we talked about rear their ugly friggin heads and we start with the limiting self-talk our accountability partner will squash those barriers and help us to keep our eye on the target and keep moving productivity tools such as uh software are great too like um asana monday.com is good i use evernote like a beast i think i was probably one of the first users of the software i mean maybe i'm being dramatic but when it came out um, and i heard about it i mean this was like I, I think like 15 years ago at least when i started using evernote uh changed everything for me because i was able to keep my life organized um this keeps your being organized keeps your tasks on track and in order so you don't feel overwhelmed so when someone asks you for something a client or someone in particular they've got their own notebook and evernote and you just you can look up all the stuff that you need to know to get the task done so anyway can't recommend those enough evernote especially um fantastic software okay next up for finding your inner drive tip number nine two tips left tip number nine celebrate milestones and successes acknowledge and celebrate your achievements no matter how small recognizing your progress and giving yourself rewards or positive affirmations can boost your motivation and reinforce a sense of accomplishment so make sure you're giving yourself that pat on the back and just acknowledging that you did it you're you're not just ending your your day job and you know sitting on the couch and binge watching a netflix show you're stopping and you're working on your goal which is more than a lot of people can say so give yourself that second and go you know what i'm working towards something and you know go me for giving it a shot because some people don't even give themselves a shot so celebrate milestones and successes tip number nine super important all right drum roll please our final tip for finding your inner drive tip number 10. tip number 10 continuously learn and grow stay curious and invest in your personal and professional development seek opportunities to learn new skills expand your knowledge and challenge yourself the pursuit of growth and learning can fuel intrinsic motivation and keep you engaged in your journey of truth as you are learning something new you may even stumble upon uh, like something that sends you on a path to improve your project in, in ways you never even thought possible here's an example for majestic truth i never really thought of doing augmented reality products what I always knew I would do is virtual reality experiences. And for those of you that don't know the difference, AR, augmented reality, is when you utilize your smart tablet or phone and its camera to place virtual objects in your physical space through your camera lens. VR, virtual reality, is when you utilize a headset like an Oculus Quest or PlayStation VR and you're transported to an entire 360 degree virtual world it's it's incredible so i always knew i would be creating a vr experience to coincide with the case files we discuss on this podcast to really give you a 360 degree experience of what happened in the abduction and cases where amazing visual things occurred to countless people but i hadn't really considered utilizing augmented reality but as i was exploring the various software packages that come with my adobe creative cloud membership I stumbled on a mini course on Adobe Aero, A-E-R-O, it's called. And I'm a learning junkie. I just love learning new pieces of software. So I said, you know, this looks neat. Let me check it out. 
And as I was progressing through the tutorials, it dawned on me, oh my, I could totally use this to create immersive interactive experiences for, for selected case files that we discuss on this podcast with audio clips, newspaper articles in 3D, animations of the shirt designs, and viewing of the case documents in the 3D space. So the moral to this is keep learning, keep discovering new, better ways to present information to people that can help them better understand the topic you are teaching or discussing. The sky's the limit. And the more you educate and learn, the better the experience that you can offer whomever your goal or project is being created for. So let's recap and sum all 10 tips up real quick. Number one, decide what you are passionate about to determine which project or goal you are going to pursue. Number two, set those goals and create that master checklist. Number three, cultivate a positive mindset. Focus on those solutions and look for those growth opportunities. Number four, find your why. Reflect on how achieving your goals will positively impact your life and the lives of others. Number five, break down those barriers. Bust up those limiting beliefs. Get rid of the need to be absolutely perfect and just get it done and silence those external distractions and make this a priority. Schedule in the time every day to do that one thing to move closer toward your goal. Number six, create a motivating environment. Surround yourself with amazing quotes and supportive people. Number seven, Practice self-care, exercise, eat better, get plenty of rest. These are all so important to staying fresh and motivated to achieve your goal or project. Number eight, build accountability and structure. Hold yourself accountable for your goals and progress. Create a schedule, find yourself an accountability partner. They can provide you guidance and the support you need to keep moving forward. Number nine, celebrate milestones and successes. Recognize that progress to reinforce that sense of accomplishment. Last but not least, number 10, keep learning and growing. Take that online course, read that book, watch that documentary, just keep educating yourself always. Remember, finding your inner drive is a personal process and it may take time and experimentation to discover what truly motivates you. Be patient with yourself and embrace the journey of truth and self-discovery. All right, truth seekers, that concludes this episode of Majestic Truth. I hope you've enjoyed our monthly Motivation Mastery episode today. Remember, the pursuit of self-truth and the quest for knowledge are ongoing journeys. So stay curious, stay open-minded, and always, always follow your dreams and keep seeking those answers. Next week, we will be exploring our next case file, the Pascagoula abduction. This occurred in 1973, and what happened to these two men left them paralyzed with fear and terror. This incident remains one of the most intriguing and mysterious UFO abduction cases on record. So tune in next week. For more information on this episode, the first in our monthly Motivation Mastery series, And to get the downloadable for this episode, visit MajesticTruth.com forward slash episode five. This downloadable will have these 10 tips for you as a reference and some worksheets to help you stay motivated. So pop over to MajesticTruth.com forward slash episode five and grab your downloadable. Thanks for joining me, Truth Seekers. I'm grateful for every listener and humbled by every subscriber. Don't forget to mark your calendars and set your alarms because our next episode will be available next Tuesday on your favorite podcast app. Trust us, you won't want to miss it. Until then, keep your eyes on the skies, your mind open, 
And remember, the truth is out there. For updates, behind the scenes content, and a chance to engage with fellow truth seekers. Stay connected with us on social media. Find us on Twitter at TruthSeekerPod, Instagram at Majestic Truth Seekers, and TikTok at Majestic Truth Seekers. Tune in next week as we explore the next case file in our 12 case file series. Our first official Truth Seeker case file was the Barney and Betty Hill abduction. Get ready for our second case file, the Pascagoula abduction. Thanks for listening.